Samsung is finally launching their 980 Pro SSD, which is their very first PCIe Gen 4 SSD, and it is supposed to be the fastest consumer slash prosumer SSD on the market. And I know that many of you have been waiting for this one for a while now, because so far, as you probably know, PCIe Gen 4 SSDs haven't really been worth buying. They would really show great results in some benchmarks, but in others, they weren't really better than Gen 3 SSDs that would cost you way less. So I, as everybody else as well, set my hopes up on Samsung to come out with a Gen 4 SSD that would destroy the competition and would be the overall best SSD that you can buy, no matter the cost. And if you look at their track record, actually, it wasn't an unrealistic expectation in my opinion. But there's still many things that we need to talk about today and coming from a long time Samsung SSD user, I really do hope that they take this review as a healthy feedback rather than a negative thing because it's not a bad SSD, it is just a complicated one. So if we look back a bit, these pro drives were loved by PC enthusiasts everywhere who were willing to pay a bit more for the fastest, highest quality drive on the market, and both 960 Pro and the 970 Pro were basically the fastest SSDs when they launched, and they had some of the best durability statistics as well. But a lot has changed for this 980 Pro, so let's talk about all the upsides of these new drives and all the downsides that you really need to know before you decide to get one for yourself. Let's go. This video is brought to you by Gigabyte and their G32QC gaming monitor. This 32-inch monitor with a curved VA panel, Quad HD resolution and 165Hz refresh rate is pretty fast and great for gaming. It supports G-Sync and FreeSync and also comes with an excellent image quality thanks to its exceptional contrast and brightness. And did I mention it's also pretty affordable? Now check it out using the links in the description below. They are launching three capacities today, 250 gigabytes, 500 gigabytes, and one terabyte. And I have all three of them here. And there is supposed to be a two terabyte model for sale later this year. EU pricing is 250 euros for the one terabyte model, 169 euros for the 500 gigabyte model, and 99 euros for the 251. And it should be pretty similar for the US as well, but than in dollars, of course. Now that actually makes them a little bit cheaper than the 970 Pro, but still considerably more expensive than most other NVMe drives on the market. Now I know it's only a minor detail, but I do appreciate Samsung making SSDs that actually look good. If you're going to make a pretty build with every part matching, you really don't want a blue PCB SSD in there. So just like with the previous Samsung SSDs, this one is very easy on the eyes. Now all the components of the SSD are on the top side, uh, so if you have a motherboard with a heatsink, that will cool all the parts and not cause any parts on the bottom to overheat. And that is pretty important because if you have an SSD that is writing gigabytes of data every single second without stopping, it will cause some serious heat. So you really want to have either an M.2 heat spreader or you really need to make sure that it has some airflow in your system to stop it from throttling under those extreme workloads. Now, one thing you will have to do before you actually start using this drive is to make sure that it is set to performance mode in Windows and that write caching is actually enabled. It will only take a few seconds of your time and to be honest, it is something that you should do for most SSDs. Now on their previous drives, uh, Samsung used their own NVMe driver that will do all that for you. And I think a simple driver like that is just so much easier for most users and it will avoid at least a couple of complaints from people wondering, you know, why their brand new Pro Drive isn't performing as fast as it is supposed to. So I'm not really on board with removing this feature for this brand new drive. It just feels like a step backwards in my opinion. But the biggest change that a lot of people were actually upset over is dropping the 2-bit MLC memory from the Pro series and using a 3-bit memory like majority of mainstream SSDs or even entry-level ones would have. Now more bits of data per cell means that SSDs wear out faster and it is slower especially when you start to really stress the drive. So why do brands choose to do it? because it is cheaper. You simply need to put fewer memory cells to get the same amount of storage, so it is a cost-saving measure 
in a way, and pretty much a part of the reason this 980 Pro is actually cheaper than the previous 970 Pro. Now, Samsung is claiming that their current generation of memory is actually faster and more reliable than previous generations, but they're not really backing that claim up with warranty. Now, like most Samsung drives so far, these do come with a five-year-long warranty, but every SSD also has a limit of how much data you can write to it before the warranty expires, even if it's within those five years. You lose the warranty on the 980 Pro if you write more than 600 terabytes of data on the one terabyte drive or even less on smaller drives. That's the same amount as on the 970 EVO Plus, but only half as much as on the 970 Pro, and that kind of caused a lot of negative feedback, of course. Now, their response to that is that 99% of NVMe owners don't even write 150 terabytes in five years, so it really won't be a big deal for most users. But while that might be completely true, it is still a downgrade and they're not doing anything to really cushion the blow. The best thing any brand can do to show that they believe in their own product is to support it with warranty. And even though the 980 Pro is cheaper than the 970 Pro, it is still an expensive drive. So I would argue that these drives are made for those 1% of users that actually really use their SSDs heavily and Samsung shouldn't really give them any reasons to doubt the pro status of this drive. Previous Gen 4 SSDs were all based on the same Fison controller and while they showed good results in some benchmarks, they really struggled to show real world benefits. Now, Samsung sticks with its own controller and with its own memory chips, and it does manage to show some really impressive read and write speeds. The one terabyte and the 500 gigabyte version even write a bit faster than Samsung's own claim of 5,000 megabytes per second, and the 250 gigabyte version falls behind in write performance. But I'm going to assume here that you're considering a 500 gigabyte or a one terabyte version anyways. They're both significantly faster than other Gen 4 SSDs and even manage to read data faster than four Aorus and VME SSDs in RAID. If you're a creator copying your video files over a 10 gigabit LAN, this is seriously fast. Or at least it is seriously fast for the first 100 or so gigabytes because after that, you will pass the limits of Samsung's TurboWrite buffer and drop to around 2000 megabytes on the one terabyte model or a bit less on the smaller capacities. Now this happens to most drives, so it's generally not a big worry, but on the 970 Pro, for example, it didn't, which kept around 2800 megabytes per second stable with no issues thanks to the 2-bit MLC memory and not relying on caching as much. Overall, the 980 Pro will be faster, but most of the time, not always. So just like earlier Gen 4 SSDs, uh, being faster in some benchmarks doesn't really mean the 980 Pro shows any real benefit in games or even most creative applications. Game loading times were within milliseconds of each other, even if you compare a good SATA drive like the 860 EVO to an NVMe drive like the 970 EVO. So you shouldn't have expected this 980 to feel any different. But creative applications like Photoshop or like Premiere, for example, don't really load faster either or offer a smoother workflow using the 980 Pro instead of the 970 Pro or Evo that I'm actually using in my own editing system. And we can see that in the graphs as well. 4K read and writes in Atto benchmark don't really look different from fast Gen 3 drives. And in the very well-balanced PCMark 8 storage test, which includes several heavy gaming and productivity benchmarks, the 980 Pro doesn't manage to stand out at all. It performs really well, and in video editing you will quickly benefit from a fast NVMe drive over a simple SATA drive, but between the 980 Pro and the 970 EVO Plus, for example, you won't really notice a big difference. Now, if you set some really intense and complicated workloads using an application like IOMeter, you will be able to show differences between these drives, but not really in a real world application. There is a little bit of hope on the horizon for Gen 4 SSDs in general. Now, new technologies like Microsoft Direct Storage and NVIDIA RTX IO are meant to really improve the way applications can use faster NVMe storage like this. And in theory, future games and applications will be able to load data much faster as long as you have a really fast drive like this one. 
but we are talking about the future here, not about the situation right now. Now, Microsoft is saying that developers will get early versions of the tools required next year. So I guess it will be probably 2022 by the time we even see the first possible results of that. Now, the fact that the 980 Pro is backwards compatible is just great. So, you know, you can use it on your Gen 3 Intel system right now and then benefit from higher speeds when you upgrade in a year or two. But to be honest, when was the last time it was really worth future-proofing your system for something you might benefit from two years from now? So with all those things combined, this SSD is in a bit of a rough position. So let's start with the good things. If you're looking to get a Gen 4 drive to prepare yourself for the future, or you have an actual workflow that really benefits from insane read and write speeds, this is the fastest Gen 4 SSD you can currently buy. So do get yourself a one terabyte or two terabyte version and you know, just sit back and enjoy the ridiculous speeds. And knowing Samsung and their prices, they usually actually drop below their MSRPs pretty quickly. So the price premium over the 970 EVO Plus, which is still one of the best all around SSDs out there, will probably not be that bad. But there are a lot of concerns here as well. And the main one is that the Gen 4 SSDs in general just don't offer any real benefits to most users just yet, while still being more expensive. And this isn't really Samsung's fault, uh, that goes for all Gen 4 SSDs out there. So it is definitely worth asking yourself if you will actually benefit from a Gen 4 drive over a more affordable NVMe SSD. But the biggest issue in my opinion is that Samsung made some choices that take away from that well-known pro name, like dropping 2-bit MLC memory for 3-bit one and relying on SLC caching to keep performance up. So it would be very fast, but it will drop quite a bit if you write a lot of data at once, which is something that the previous 970 Pro didn't do. And on top of that, the TBW warranty is half of the one you get on the 970 Pro. The lack of a driver is a minor issue that you can fix yourself, but again, not having to go into your Windows settings to get optimal performance was also part of that Samsung Pro experience that kind of justified its higher price as well. Now I know, the 970 Pro was very expensive and the 980 Pro is faster in most ways and comes in at a lower price, and that's all great, but I think that if you ask a significant price premium for a premium product, at least make sure that the price is the only real downside worth talking about. Now, that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, let me know in the comments down below what do you think about this new 980 Pro. And while you're there, give me a like and subscribe to this channel to never miss an upload. Bye guys.